So my God, 9.1. And uh, it's it really is shockingly high. And Biden's out there already saying, don't believe your lying eyes. It's really not that bad. Uh, things have gotten a lot better since that those numbers were calculated over the past 30 days. It's out of date. Energy alone comprised nearly half of the monthly increase in inflation. And this data doesn't reflect the full impact of nearly 30 days of decreases in gas prices, says the president, also pointing out that other commodities like wheat have fallen sharply since this report, and then goes on, of course, to say other countries are suffering from inflation and battling, quote, this COVID-related challenge made worse by Putin's unconscionable aggression. What do you make of it? Well, you're right. So the expectation on the part of analysts was that this number, this inflation number will come in at 8.8%. Like you said, it was 9.1. Last month, it was 8.6%. So the number still hasn't peaked. I remember a couple of months ago, the belief was that that inflation would have peaked by now because inflation is measured on a year over year basis. And so as you start to lap bigger and bigger numbers from last year, then you would expect the inflation rate to go down. But that has not happened. Uh, we're still setting new highs each month in inflation. And you're right that gas is the biggest culprit here. However, it's also groceries are up 12% in the past year. That's the biggest annual increase since 1979. Chicken is up 19% in the past year. That's the biggest increase ever. Electricity is up 14%. That's the biggest increase since 2006. Rent is up about 6%. That's the biggest increase since 1986. So it's not just gas, it's a broad-based inflation problem. And um, yeah, I think we're we're still in the midst of dealing with it. And, that, and the problem is that any wage growth we've seen, any employment numbers that look good on paper, all get dented. Uh, they all get dinged up by inflation. It's like, who cares if you get, you know, a 5% wage increase when your inflation rate on all of your groceries and so on right. are is 9.1%. That's right. I mean, workers, uh, real wages are not keeping up with the rate of inflation. And so they can really feel it when they go to the pump or buy groceries. And I think this is going to be foremost on voters' mind in November. Uh, Just to give the president his due, gas prices have come down about 15 to 20 percent over the past month. So if you were to measure inflation today in light of that decrease, it would be a little bit lower than this 9.1 percent number. But it still wouldn't be good. You're talking about 8 percent roughly um, inflation numbers, I think you can depend on between now and the November election. So the numbers just aren't going to get good enough, fast enough to help the administration. I think that um, they've got a big problem here uh, coming into November. It's, of course, so you, so you have Biden coming out today and saying out of date, out of date. But what we've mm-hmm. been told, even in the face of the 8.8 number the last month, is really not to believe our lion eyes. In, ad- in addition to the Putin pr- uh, you know, price hike stuff that he keeps saying, here was the White House press secretary just a couple of days ago on how strong our economy is at SOT1. When you look at inflation, when we look at where we are economically, and we are in a strong, uh, we are stronger economically than we have been uh, in history. When you look at the unemployment numbers at 3.6%, uh, when you look at the jobs numbers, uh, more than 8 Point seven million of of new jobs created. That is important. Stronger than we've been in history, and citing the unemployment rate, which is, I mean, it's just such cherry picking and lacking context. In any fair press, we'd have an immediate fact check, but since it's the Biden White House, we won't. Yeah, I mean, the unemployment rate as it stands today is low, but the labor participation rate is also low. We've got millions of people who haven't gone back to work, and that's not really counted in the unemployment number. Um, The other thing that the administration should be really worried about is the economy is slowing down really fast. And this is a result of the uh, rate increases that the Fed is now having to uh, push in response to inflation. So I think that we're very, you already saw in Q1, we had a negative uh, growth rate for GDP. In a, another couple of weeks, we'll get the growth rate for Q2. If that number is negative, we will officially be in a recession. But regardless of whether that number is technically negative or not, if you poll most Americans right now, most Americans already believe we're in a recession. So they are feeling the pinch from this inflation. Um, I think that you're seeing companies slam on the brakes uh, in response to the Fed rate increases. And so the economy is definitely slowing down. And I think there's a pretty good chance that um, if we're not in recession 
by the end of this month, we will be by the end of this year. It's a weird recession in a way, because I remember the recession of 1991. I was in college and, uh, you know, the graduating class a year or two ahead of me, they were all struggling to find work. You know, I mean, when you think of recession, you think about a tough job market. As you point out, th this is a low, this is not a tough job market. You can find a job in this job market. It's just the question of when you get your salary and you take it home, what can you buy? And how does it compare to what you could have bought with the same number 12 months ago? But the this, this unemployment rate is very interesting and it's kind of frustrating. I mean, I'll tell you, I've experienced it myself personally. I've, I've read accounts of other people who are going through the same thing. We come to New Jersey during the summer months and um, you, you cannot go out to a restaurant here because there's no staff. They're, like all of these restaurant owners are begging for the college students, for anybody who can work to apply for a, sh a chef or a cook job, for a waiter or waitressing job, for, you know, a bar back or a, um, you know, busboy type job. They can't. And I'll, I'll, I, I mentioned this guy before. He's clearly a Republican here. Uh, at the Jersey Shore, and I was kind of laughing because on the Upper West Side, you have a AOC action figures and Dr. Fauci superhero dolls. And here on the Jersey Shore, where it's a little redder, you got this guy who posts in, in his, um, you know, he runs like a, a mall, uh, like a strip mall kind of place. And this is what his sign reads. Please be patient. We are short staffed. Hopefully the government will soon cease in their endeavor to enslave people through handouts and crush small businesses. Hopefully, but don't hold your breath. So this guy's basically saying he can't get staff. And I think people are feeling this all over the country where you go and you can't get service because they just can't find employees. So why or how can we both be in a recession and have a shortage of workers? Well, we have a very low by historical standards labor participation rate. And so a lot of workers have not gotten back into the workforce. And you could lay some of the blame for that at the two trillion dollar that last two trillion of stimulus that that Biden passed last year, the American Rescue Plan, along straight party lines. And the Republicans were accused of being cold hearted when they pointed out that these STEMI checks and the super extended unemployment insurance would encourage people not to go back to work or delay them from going back to work. And so I think we're still seeing the residual effect of all of the stimulus money flowing through the economy. Um, there are the, the technical unemployment rate is low, but there's a lot of unfilled jobs. There's a lot of people not participating in the economy. Um, I think what you're going to see now, though, is that the unemployment rate is going to start to rise. Um, there's no question that the economy is slowing down. And it's I think most analysts now believe it's just a matter of time before we're in a recession. So I think you are actually going to see a lot of um, increased joblessness uh, claims over the next six months or so. And you're going to start to see these things uh, normalize and behave more like you'd expect. Remember, the un unemployment rate is really a lagging indicator of economic success. And so, you know, it's still reflecting the economy we had last year. Um, I think that the number will change over the next year or so. Gathering around the dinner table has been the catalyst for change since the beginning of time. Good things happen at the dinner table. Ronald Reagan once said, all great change in America starts at the dinner table. If we can return to eating meals together as a family, then we can create the conversation and the change we want to see. Maybe it feels overwhelming to get everybody together and then still also make a great meal. But Good Ranchers has got you. They make it easy. Pull out a Good Ranchers package of beef, chicken, seafood, season it with salt and pepper, and then cook it up however you like. It tastes great. Or if you want it pre-marinated, they've got that too. Every box you get is superior quality, flavor, and value. Good Ranchers is a company that supports American agriculture and business. You're already buying meat. Why not support an American company like Good Ranchers? Use my code, Megan, to get 30 bucks off your order plus free shipping. Make gatherings at the table easy and fun with Good Ranchers. Go to goodranchers.com slash M-E-G-Y-N to bring your family and friends to the table and eat some seriously delicious food. Goodranchers.com slash Megan. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.